Church, praise the Lord again. I'm happy uh, once again to welcome you to this wonderful service organized by the church. And I hope you'll be blessed because God has invited you to be bless you and to guide you and to uh, just to lift you. So feel welcome. I want to pray that the Spirit of God will move in this service. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have a, a reason to thank you, to bless you for this wonderful time again. You have made for us to gather together to worship and praise and seek your face. Pray that you will be with us. You will unite us wherever we are there watching. You will purify our hearts and you will help us by your spirit to be concentrative and to participate actively in this service that by the end we shall say thank you and glory shall return to you. So be with us and let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. So welcome. We want to begin this wonderful service. In the presence of God we know there is fullness of joy. So I want you to uh, together with me to go to the word of God to read uh, in the Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1 to 7 and then we shall read Matthew chapter 21 verse 33 to 4 to 44 and then we pray accordingly. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1 to 7 and then Matthew chapter 21 from verse 33 to 44 and I hope God will bless you as you proclaim the word, the word of God has power, has life, it heals, it revives, it strengthens, it brings joy. So I hope we are there. Can we read together? Verse 1 of Isaiah chapter 5 it says, Now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. Verse 2, he dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine. He built a tower in its midst and also made a, a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. Verse 3, and now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge please between me and my vineyard. Verse 4, what more could, ha could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Verse 5, now, and now please, let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its head, hedge, and it shall be burnt, and break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. Verse 6, I will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned or dark, but they shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they may rain no rain on it. Final verse 7, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant plan. He looked for justice, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry for help. We go to Matthew chapter 21. Quickly, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21 from verse 33 to 44. It's about the parable of the wicked vine dressers. Verse 33. Here another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And he leased it to the vine dressers and went into a far country. 
verse 34. Now when the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vineyard dressers that they might receive its fruit. 35. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Verse 36. Again he sent other servants more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Verse 37, then the last of all he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. Verse 38, but when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. Verse 39, so they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Verse 14, Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these, those vine dressers? Verse 41, they say to him, He will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his, his vineyard to other vine dressers who render to him the fruits in their season. Verse 44, Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scripture? The stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. That was the Lord's uh, doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Verse 43, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. Mark the word fruits of it. Verse 44, and whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whoever it falls to grind him to powder. Amen. So this is the word to meditate as we begin this service. We are talking about bearing fruit in the kingdom of God. We need to go to help us. We want to pray wherever you are, the spirit of God will help us whether we are in line with the word of God or out, where we are bear, bearing fruit, uh, the, the, the same uh, passage in Isaiah chapter 5 and Matthew 21, speaking about the same thing, about bearing fruit. And if we fail to bear fruit, God will punish us. We don't want to punish, to be punished, I mean. So our first prayer item will be God to help us to search us, where are we? Are we bearing fruit or not? Can we take time to pray shortly that prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, come to you by the help of the Spirit of God to search my ways, my actions, my everything. I want to know if I am qualified in your weighing scales, whether I'm bearing fruits, that pertains to the kingdom of God. May you search me and search each one of us. Spirit of God, reign. Take total control of our lives this, in this service and minister to each one of us. That out of this, we shall have a, great, a right direction of God in fruit-bearing issues in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I believe as you are engaging the Spirit of God, God has ministered to you something. Maybe you are not bearing to the full capacity or you are not bearing at all. We want to pray. Where you are lacking, you ask the Lord to forgive you and, and cleanse you because he has given us another chance in this service. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you in repentance. I know I am lacking in many ways, not bearing fruit that befits the kingdom of God. Forgive me as an individual. Forgive us corporately. May you show mercy upon our lives. May you show mercy upon our ways, our actions, our way of doing things that have quenched you. May you help us. 
May you wash us by the blood of Jesus and make us acceptable that this time we shall be revived to bear much fruit to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we want to ask the Spirit of God to reign in the whole service. Lift your expectation to him. Your challenges, the things that cause you to be anxious, to be fearful, to be full of worry, surrender to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory. Spirit of God, I ask you to reign, to take total control. Reign, I surrender my challenges to you, my expectations to you my fears to you, my anxieties to you, my everything to you, every issue, every problem, every burden, I surrender to you. And corporately, we surrender every burden to you. Spiritual burdens, financial burdens, uh, health-wise burdens, professional burdens, family burdens, uh, ministry burdens, burdens of the nation, the city, our people, we surrender to you because we know you do care and we know you will take total control as we listen to you in, throughout the service. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we say amen? So we thank God because he has heard our prayer. We want now to take part in uh, praising him and worshiping him. So I take this time to welcome the praise and worship. Welcome.
Jesus. There is none like you, O oh God. There is none who deserves our praise but you, Lord. There is none who deserves to be exalted but you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory and adoration. Let's lift our voices and worship the Lord. Let's just tell the Lord that there is none like you, O oh God. There is none who deserves our praise. We need you, O God. You are of the Lord. Let's just meditate on the things that he has done for us. Even the things that we think that he has not done for us. Indeed, Lord, you are God and there is none but you, O God. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory and adoration, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are Elohim, O God.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. We are very joyful after this wonderful session in praising and worshiping the Lord. I know God's name is glorified and I take this time again to give thanks to the Lord for the praise and worship. May God continue to lift them so that they can be a blessing. Having said that, I want to pray that God will be with us and with me in this session as I minister the word which is able to help each one of us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you to thank you for the sessions that have passed. And I pray that you shall prevail in this session. You'll use me by the power of the Holy Spirit to effect your word on each one of us, to transform, to bring victory, and to bring your counsel to each one of us. So prevail over uh, this session and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we want to continue where we left last time. I know you are copying the notes so that you can be reading and the Holy Spirit will be expanding on them. Last time we saw an attribute about our God that God is light. We saw that God is light as related to his majesty and glory. And we read the scriptures. God is light and he's so glorious. He dwells in an unapproachable light that we cannot reach him. But thanks to his son, Lord Jesus, through his blood, when we cleanse our lives, we are able to, uh, to, uh, to behold him. So we thank God for that. We saw those scriptures uh, and many other scriptures that the Spirit of God will help you when you are studying the Bible. You'll find many related scriptures and that's how you shall be effective. We cannot exhaust everything in this service because of time. But take uh, time, be a, a student of the Bible. Be a student of the Word of God. That's how you can grow. So take those scriptures and go to the related verses, parallel verses. You shall enrich your spiritual life. So we saw that last time. Now we want to continue. Uh, another attribute is about God is love. Before we read the scripture in the Bible dictionary, as I was uh, reading, I saw the meaning of love is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the well-being of another. I repeat, love means unselfish, comma, loyal, comma, and benevolent concern for the well-being of another. It is well explained in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, but we cannot read it now. You will read it is a very familiar chapter about love. So, it is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the well-being of another as related to the very heart of God's nature. As re related to the very heart of God's nature. Another hyphen, as related, start with a hyphen. Another hyphen, a hyphen, love involves manifests itself by love involves in between brackets manifests itself by close the, uh, the bracket so before you see this manifestation of God's love we want to read a scripture that will help you and me in first John 
chapter 4, verse 7 to 16. So we read verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Verse 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifested to us as that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Verse 10. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and has sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 12, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. Verse 13, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. Verse 14, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Verse 15, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Finally, verse 16, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. So it is self-explanatory. God is love, and we need to have these attributes, in a, not in a perfect way like God, but a measure. We need to cry to have this love. And he has said, it is possible by his spirit. It is possible by his spirit. So we need to engage the spirit of God to help us to have this love for God and for one another. But particularly verse 12, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. So one way of showing we love God is to love one another unconditionally. Be in the church, be in our places of work, to love people unconditionally. Whether they have good character or bad, whatever their behaviors, we love unconditionally. But we hate what they are doing. We pray for them, but we love them, not to hate them because of the way they present themselves or the way they handle things. This can be possible by the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God, we shall be hypocritical like the Pharisees who love those who love them and salute and greet those who greet them. It can be so bad. We need God to work in us, the people of God. We people, we meet many people who tell us, in many fellowships, how even a sister or brother cannot greet and is showing even openly. I recently I was told from another fellowship, uh, another sister was so depressed that senior people in the church, the way even greeting, even doing what they cannot do, which means this thing we need to tackle in our in our lives me individually, you individually, so that we can portray a good picture outside. It starts from me. You cannot say this church, they do not love me. They don't love unless you love. You have to start from you. You cannot tell people, this place people do not love. Eh, do not love. You have to start uh, by you. Because uh, as I was teaching sometimes, if you hate yourself, it will project to people to hurt you because spirits 
are very active. So you have to check and you may need deliverance because self-hate brings rejection. It repels people not to love you. So God will help us, but God demands the Holy Spirit to help us so that we can, he can help us to have love to pour to others. First to love ourselves and pour the love of God to others so that we can be perfected. That's what it means. It is, and many other scriptures you can read. So we want to continue. Now, I said love involves in between brackets, manifests itself by, close the brackets, a grace. Love manifests in the grace. And that's why we need to pray for the grace of God to be upon us more and more so that love will manifest in grace. Grace is an aspect of love. Grace is an aspect of love. What is grace? Grace is undeserved. Undeserved, undeserved acceptable, and love received from another. Undeserved acceptable and love received from another. You see, comma, especially the characteristic attitude of God in providing salvation to sinners. I repeat, grace is undeserved acceptance and love received from other, another, comma, especially the characteristic attitude of God in providing salvation to sinners. So undeserved acceptance. We were sinners. We read many scriptures in the Bible. But while we are sinners, the Lord loved us. The Lord loved you. He forgave you. He forgave me. I need to love and forgive people forgive people and love them and let it go hmm? so we want to read ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 it is self-explanatory just read and god will help you as you read in your leisure time did uh, deeply can we go there ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 10 it says verse 1 and you he made alive who are dead in trespasses and sins. That is salvation. Verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Verse 3, among whom also we all once contacted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. Verse 5, even when we are dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. By grace you have been Saved. It is in my Bible. It is in it is in brackets. By grace, you have been saved. We did not deserve to be saved, but undeserved acceptance and love received from God. By his grace, we have been saved. Is in that good church? We need to thank God. It is not our doing. Verse six. And raise up us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Spiritually, posi positionally, in the spirit, you are in third heaven. And this, uh, with this undeserved acceptance, you are seated with the king of kings. Just say wherever you are, uh, you, you, you are, God loves me. Praise God. You see, in Poly I see in the meetings, political meetings, 
somebody, even a lame person, some I see a leaders, they call even and deserve the person and the, cause they tell him how him sit on this chair. So that person is enjoying. He's not deserving eh, to sit there eh, in front of people or uh, with the people of great honor. Spiritually, Jesus has made you who are undeserving, rejected, despised, you and me, to sit in a place of honor, which, where is, which, is, uh, which is undeserved for you. We, that place of honor, we have God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are seated there positionally in the Spirit. That is a great blessing. It is more than the person who goes to state house to sit with the president. So, verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. We see even we shall see kindness and mercy as they are explained. Eight, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Verse 9, not of works lest anyone should boast. It is not our works. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, that is what God is saying about grace. Be mercy. Mercy is a personal characteristic of care for the needs of others. Mercy is a personal characteristic of care for the needs of others. A hyphen biblical concept of mercy always involves help to those who are in need or distress. Mercy, a personal characteristic of care for the needs of others, a hyphen, biblical concept of mercy always involves help to those who are in need or distress. The uh, example is compassion of a father for his prodigal son in the Bible. Luke chapter 15 verse 20 says, And he, uh, he arose now the father and came to his, and he arose and came to his father now son, he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. You see? The, the, the son has messed up, but because of my mercy, the father had to address the need of reconciling that son to himself. Not eh, considering the mistakes. Even we are not told in this parable that the father complained, you took a lot of money, you took a lot of my uh, nini, you squandered, he did not complain. That's what mass is. You, you put aside the mistake of a person. You see a person in a deplorable state, maybe he stole your money, he took your property, he spent and he's suffering, he's in hunger, in a thirst, in want. You cannot say I won't help you. You say, because of that merciful heart, you shall help. Because he has come running to you, maybe saying, I have sinned. You have to help because of the compassionate heart you have. That is, when you reach that place, you know you have the mercy of God. Because most of the time, we, when people wrong us, we don't, when they are in need or distress, we say, we start saying many things. Eh? Let him now feel the pinch. When he was doing, was he not knowing that it is wrong? Now he's suffering. Let him now learn a lesson. You see, that is bad. We need to have the mercy, the compassionate of God. People wrong us, people always wrong us, but God demands us to show mercy. I believe we are together. Number six, kindness. Kindness 
It means that steadfast love that maintains relationship through gracious aid in times of need. The steadfast love that maintains relationships through gracious aid in times of need. It, it, it has to do with the loyal love which manifests itself not in emotions but in action. Not in emotions but in action. Love is not emotion. When we even when we are singing, I love you, Lord, God will bring a situation to test you if I, I really love him or really love him. So it needs to be governed by the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 11, verse 22. Romans chapter 11, verse 22 says, Therefore, consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fail. Severity, severity, but towards you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you will also be cut off. So, Paul was telling the Romans about the Gentiles because God made the Israels, his people, the Jews, to, to have a hard heart. He used it that to blind them so that he can turn to the Gentiles and show him his kindness. So Paul was telling the Gentiles who have been crafted to consider, to be serious in their salvation. If the, uh, the, the, the olive, uh, the true branch was cut and you, the olive branch, the wild branch, I mean, was grafted, if we disobey, it, we can be easily cut. Because God is the same and his dealings are the same. But he showed the Gentiles kindness by in crafting them to the process of redemption, the process of, of salvation, by making his people to be blind, to be hardened, so that the inclusion of the Gentiles can be done. That is what kindness is in God's wisdom. And it is not in emotions or actions, uh, or emotions, but in actions. It has to be in actions, not excitement. I am very kind to you, but the actions are, are uh, telling otherwise. It has to show kindness is depicted in actions, not emotions. Brother, I love you. Sister, I love you. I am kind to you. No, it has to be in actions. The next number D is goodness. Goodness. It means experiences of what God has done and is doing in the lives of his people. Goodness is experiences of what God has done and is doing in the lives of his, of his people. For example, the goodness of God is experienced in the goodness of God's creative work. Whatever God does is good. We can see in that one scripture of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 31. It says, Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So it is the goodness of God about his works and everything. That's why we needed to love God, to do his work, to bear fruit. Because when we, he has does, done good to us, we are able to extend that goodness to our people. Whether they love us or not, the people can have a testimony about us, we people of God, the, this brother is good, this sister is good. I did not deserve this goodness. 
but he did. Like we read in many scriptures, the sun shines to the wicked and the righteous, the same to the rain, showing the goodness of God to all the creatures, to all the universe. So we need also to have that a characteristic in us to bear fruit. People will offend you, obstruct you, say many things, but we have to have that character of doing good, whether people love you or not. When we reach that level, we shall have now, the, we shall bear fruit and we shall have the character of Christ. Number E, benevolence. Benevolence is B-E-N-E-V-O-L-E-N-C-E. -E -E. It means an inclination or tendency to do kind or charitable acts. It is an inclination, inclination or tendency to do kind or charitable acts. That is benevolence. A benevolent person, one who does charitable good acts. We have seen even worldly people being commended. You read the history like Mother Teresa, Teresa, many people have read of her charitable acts before she went, she died. And many other people, assisting people, doing good works. You are a benevolent person. You don't want people to suffer. You want people to be well. You feel very bad when you see people suffering. And that the climax of it is uh, the character of God to us, all his creatures. We summarize that in John, which we know, chapter 3, verse 16. It is good to read. That is the, the whole matter, all the, uh, everything that we need to be or to act like Jesus or God who loved his people and did the necessary. John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God love, so that humanity will not be lost. He gave his best. So love also will he? Cause us to give our best, our best in serving him, our best in giving to him, our best in doing good to people, our, high, our best because these people are in the image of God. When we do that, we shall bear much fruit. May God help us. May God help each one of us as we continue to learn this attribute of love, may God help us. I want to lead you in a short prayer before we take Holy Communion. Go and study about love of God. We are going slowly by slowly so that every aspect you take a week to meditate upon it and the Spirit of God will help you. So I want to lead you in this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this revelation. God, you are God of love. As related to your grace, your mercy, your kindness and goodness and benevolence towards your creatures, according to John chapter 3, verse 16. May, may you pour in me this love. And let, let this love come with your grace in my heart, your mercy your kindness, your goodness. I want to depict, to display these, these attributes. Help me. Forgive me where I have not been gracious, I have not been merciful, I have not been kind to people, I have not been good to people, I have not been benevolent to people. Forgive me and help me 
even as I prepare to partake the Lord's table, I believe you sacrifice your life for these virtues to come. As I believe in your body that was broken and your blood, I know as I prepare, I receive all this and I shall be a different person. I shall bear fruit to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we say amen? So we want to read a scripture in Matthew 26, and then we take verse 26. Matthew chapter 26, from verse 26 up to 28, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. Verse 27, then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Verse 28, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the many for the remission of sins. Amen. So it is time to partake. I hope you are now ready in your uh, house. If you are a priest to officiate the partaking of the Holy Communion, which is very important, it can heal you, it can revive you, it can bring all these virtues in your life, it can resurrect you, it can bless you. So believe the word we have, sp the Lord has spoken, and. Be ready as we prepare all together. Clean your hands and do everything in an orderly way. Do everything in an orderly way. I hope you have the bread and the cup. I want to pray for the bread and the cup. As you lift your bread and your cup, wherever you are, this prayer will reach you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this bread as it was. That time you took it, the bread, you gave thanks and broke it and gave your disciples and told them, eat, this is my body. Let it be so as we believe in your body that was mm, broken for our redemption and to receive all the virtues that has been mentioned in your heart. So sanctify this bread, let it accomplish your will and many other things we shall receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, he took the cup, and after taking, he blessed it and gave thanks. Father, in the name of Jesus, as that time also you took the cup, you blessed it and gave thanks and told your disciples to drink all of them from it, for that is your blood of the new covenant of the remission of the sins of many. Lord, let this cup represent your blood to cleanse our lives, to heal us, to revive us, to uh, receive the virtues in the blood, to help us to have the character of Christ so that we can bear fruit. May you sanctify it, may you bless it in Jesus' name, amen. Having done that now, the leader, Take the bread and start breaking in small pieces according to the number of people you have. nicely you may partake after the service or keep for another holy use continue breaking and after you finish also put the um, arrange many cups so that you can
pour in according to the number of people. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my blood. I hope we are set. So let us start to distribute as you see me doing in this studio so i hope we are set each one has a piece of bread also let us take the cup and distribute as you see me doing we thank god i know now we are set with the bread and the cup just lift the bread and it, uh, give thanks as we partake all together. We can partake the cup with thanksgiving. So we thank the Lord Jesus for what he has done through this Holy Communion. Let his name be exalted. Can we say amen? We thank the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We have received the blessings in the body, in your body and in your blood. All the virtues that are in your body and blood, we receive them. We have received them with thanksgiving. Each one has been delivered, has been saved, healed, and we have been changed to bear much fruit to the glory and honor of your name in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we thank the Lord. Having done that, we bless the name of the Lord. It is now time to give, for the Lord has been gracious, has blessed each one of us. So let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Pray for each one who is giving the tithes, the first fruit, the offerings, the thanksgiving, the building project that will be with them. Bless them mightily in every sphere according to your will and sanctify every giving by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. So let us give. The number is on the screen. If you cannot send through that number, you can come physically to our offices. Lower Hill Duplex, suit 42, you shall be assisted. So God bless you as you give. Amen. Now we want to end our meeting, our service, as we read this, I read this benediction, Psalms 20. First let me pray a prayer of thanksgiving for the Lord's uh, faithfulness in this service. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your faithfulness and everything. I prayed that you come to help us. You have been faithful throughout the service in every session. I have a reason to thank you on behalf of the congregation. And blessed be your name. Be with us the whole week as we meditate on your love. May the Spirit of God expand that we shall really uh, indeed bear much fruit uh, for the kingdom. We, can, we shall not be cast away because of being dry. So let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we lift our hands as you say amen to these wonderful words of God. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now 
and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Bye. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God.